last you guys were here, you were in, you're in the Icewind Dale, uh, surviving. The world is locked in perpetual, never-ending winter that the locals are blaming upon the evil goddess named Ariel, the goddess of winter's fury. You've done several things, which I had planned to write out, and I'm going to do this like a document that goes through so I can quickly review everything that you've done and everything that you're planning on doing. Currently, you've been chasing a band of merchants across the, uh, across the frozen tundra from town to town on a mission for Hillen Trollbane, trying to find someone that she believes is a killer. A man by the name of Sefik Keltro that's working security for a band of merchants named uh, uh, Torgas, Torga Ice Veins. Uh, you got the impression that Torga is a bit of a local tough and may have some connections to some form of organized crime in some ways. You bought some dogs from her and then tracked her band of merchants from the city of Bremen to the town of Targos. In Targos, you noted that they entered Targos, and on the backside, you did not see if they had left Targos. You were not able to track them. You knew that they were eventually headed to the town of Tamerlane, around the bend of Merdweldwin. Instead of waiting for them or trying to lay an ambush, you decided to head on to the town of Merdweldwin, to the town of Tamerlane. And got lost in the ice along the way there, dealing with an ice troll and eventually finding your way there. In the town of, of Termalane, you found no merchants present, but did find the speaker of town, a half-orc man, who told you that the local gem mine had become overrun with kobolds and asked if you were there about that. You were adventure toughs and that the town was in dire need as the miners were unable to do their jobs and offered you gold in exchange for uh, clearing out the kobolds of the mine. That would uh, be a tough job for him to do, for the locals to do, and too tough for the miners, but for a group of adventurers like you, no problem. Descending into the mine, you eventually came across the deep shaft. He had he had also told you that previous to the uh, kobolds uh, coming, uh, a miner or two had disappeared in the mine, and the local miners were blaming some beast that they believed had crawled up from the Underdark. Local speaker suggesting that perhaps they had just fallen down the deep shaft into, uh, into the darkness. Uh, you went into the, into the mine and scouted around. You found some items. And uh, eventually made your way to a uh, killed a couple of kobolds that were sawing at a uh, at a shelf underneath the uh, underneath the snow, and made your way around the bend down into a lower level of said mine. Uh, you eventually encountered the kobolds that were hiding there, including one that spoke uh, much more um, artfully than you would expect for a kobold that had faux wings strapped to his back uh, and seemed to be their leader in, in a sense. Harkus unleashing dragon breath upon them eliminated them all quickly. Uh, to the eyes of the rest of you, uh, not much happened. To Harkus's eyes, however, uh, some sort of spirit-like entity left the body of the kobold that he had killed and attempted to possess him. Harkus managed to fend off said possession, uh, and the spirit uh, seemed to dissipate. At the same time, uh, another one of our characters, uh, Yatara, heard uh, strange sounds, uh, like a beeping sound that was sort of gnawing at his ear that, nobody else, that no one else seemed to hear. It seemed to be emanating from across the way. Uh, there was a bucket uh, attached to a string that you were able to sort of pull yourself one person at a time across the like never-endingly deep shaft to another wooden plank on the opposite side. And it seemed to be emanating from from that uh, side of the pit. And uh, that is where we find ourselves now. And you're deep in the mine, and I will take you there now.
as soon as I get our musical accompaniment. Deep in the mind. Now, there we are. Yatara, uh, everyone, you are standing on this plank after you watched Harkus unleash dragon fire upon the kobolds there that you had you had determined were being somewhat false. They had told you, "Take us to town." We uh, we only wish to work the mine. We would be a benef- we would be a benefit to the city of, to the denizens of Termalane. We don't mean to cause said trouble. Uh, please, we mean you no harm at all. Uh, Harkus unleashed his dragon fire and said, "Kobolds are no more." Gitara, you hear the strange sound emanating from across the uh, across the way, and it sounds like a. It's just every now and then. And it's not that bad. It's not like eating at your uh, at your mind or anything, but it's kind of repeating periodically. It kind of goes beep, 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 beep. And then you hear and then again beep, 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 beep. And then what sounds like you can't really make out the rest. And that's where we find ourselves. And I think, Yatari, you've asked other people if they've heard that, and everyone sort of said no. You guys are here. What do you do? So, I believe when we left off, Yatara was about to try to convince us that we should enable the bucket travel to chase down these uh, noises or whatever this is, but we can't hear them. So, yeah. Then, Yatara, what do you do? Yeah, I was trying to convince the group. So let me ask you, is the bucket on our side or is it on the far side? There's like a crank on each side where you could pull okay. the bucket to you. Like, imagine like a loop of rope and then like you're able to like pull the bucket back to either side and pull yourself across. Okay. So it doesn't really so, matter. Um, you know, I think I, I asked the group last time if they were hearing the noise. Nobody else hears it, but um, you know, explain to the group all the the visions that I've had before when we're off in the wilderness, and I think something is calling towards me um, from the other side of the platform. And so um, I'm going to attempt to cross the rope either by myself or if someone wants to help me. Okay. Yeah. Um, but also, um, is there anything that I can, I can't remember last time, did I, did I roll perception to see? see if I could see anything. Uh, All you can see is another wooden plank on the opposite side and a couple of pathways. Uh, Yatara, I'm not going to make you roll a check. This is just you get in the bucket and uh, if you're going to bucket yourself across, you're able to do so. Okay. Yes, I am going to bucket myself across. On the other side, Yatara, you start to uh, you hear the same sound. It is a little bit louder, and it is coming from sort of down this more southern kind of path here. Mm, I'm not. I'm going to stand there and kind of look back to see if anybody's going to follow me. A little bit weary of my squishy self going in there alone. Leonard will follow. I'll follow okay. too. All right, one at a time. Leonard, you bucket yourself across, and Cadillac, you bucket yourself across. I do. Okay. Uh, Yutara, you're able to point down into this cavern, and you can see that it's kind of a, at least it looks like it's come to an end there. You can't see all the way wrapping around it, I guess, um, if there may be a path or so coming off of it. But you can tell that it's sort of coming from there. You see what looks like uh, crystals, tourmalines, and things like that set into the wall there. Uh, but you'd have to move a little closer to get a closer look. So I ask you, Taurus, are you, you're still, you're still, you're feeling a call, you said. You like hear it, yeah, Tara. Yes, I definitely hear a call. Uh, you, Tara, roll insight real quick. Or maybe Arcana, you can roll either. Okay, 11 insight, roll Arcana. Okay, 
Uh, you think that it's in your head. After they say they can't hear it, you think that it's like in your head, like you're picking up uh, psychic energies, something like that. Angel radio. Something like that. So um, I can't give you more with an 11, uh, with a 16, I can give you that you think it, they can't hear it. It must be some sort of psionic or psychic thing. Uh, but you don't get any further insight into like what could be doing that. So I uh, pat Yatara on the uh, shoulder and I say, take care. And when she turns uh, her back to me um, without saying anything uh, directly to her, I cast protection from evil and good on her. Is Yatara she? He. 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 I didn't know. Yeah, he. Could be either. Them. Yes. All right. Protection from evil and good. Maybe guitar is a thing. It's a big I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to step into this entryway just a little. Okay. Uh, you see, as you step into the entryway, you see a uh, tourmaline crystal set into the wall, and you can see that the path sort of comes to a dead end. Uh, you can see something that looks a little bit odd in the wall of the uh, stone uh, down against the far wall. It, it doesn't look like it's like a sort of a different sort of looking material than the rest of like the stone of the wall. Uh, you need to get close to it to sort of see what it is. But you can tell there's something that seems to be set into the wall of the rock there. Hmm. I'm going to move closer to it. I'll um, move actually, it to for backup. Actually, before, As, I, before I move into the room, um, I'm going to cast the tech magic. Okay. Um, let's see here. Yeah, you, you get the tech magic. Okay. Uh, I'm just not sure what school of magic so give me a moment. give me a second okay uh boom, 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 boom. let me just do a quick inter internet search to see if i can figure out what school of magic this would be um Okay, you get magic, and it's almost like a school of magic that you're kind of unfamiliar with, Yatara. The closest that you can sort of like figure out what it is, is something that's like conjuration, maybe? But it's kind of different than anything you've ever encountered before. Uh, and it's emanating from and it's in a shape that doesn't make an awful lot of sense to you because it's just kind of like an amorphous looking shape and it seems to be emanating from that area in the wall where things are sort of abnormal looking okay i'm going to approach it then okay as you as you approach the far wall you see something uh you see a shape jutting out of the wall uh and roll me investigation Sixteen. Uh, what you see, and you're certain with a sixteen, is you see a skull jutting out of the wall. Uh, but it's kind of creepy because the eye sockets are larger than they should be, larger than normal, and there is a curious ridge between the eyes, and nothing that would pass for a nose. And instead of like where like the jaw should be and the teeth should be, there are like four small holes curious looking holes where one would expect the teeth to be and if you're looking sort of closely at it you can something sort of catches do you guys have light sources or are you just looking with like your dark vision Toot cast light on a sign. Sign of Toot is holding a light. 
but he's across um, the way. I can he, generate. I can generate light away. if need be. I just didn't know if you were. If you were just using dark vision. Yeah, two threw that sign in the the pit whenever he called them a liar. Long so gone. I don't have it. Yeah. Okay. Then that's all you catch is this weird looking skull, and you can tell that like this is emanating from this thing. Can I can I actually cast prestidigitation to actually cast a little bit of light? Yeah, because it seems like it's hard for me to see. Yeah, uh, yeah. As you do that, you cast pre prestidigitation. And you light up like your fingers or something, and you can see something catches the light inside of the eye socket, and seems to reflect it kind of back to you deep down inside of the skull. Hmm. Are you guys getting the horror movie vibes yet? Curious like a cat. I want to try to extract it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Danger, Will Robinson. Danger. Right. Uh, <laughs> no good can come from this. You're able to, with some work, extract the skull with the four holes for teeth and large eye sockets out of the out of the uh, cape wall, and oh. you can tell. Yeah. Can I see the skull? You can. Like, is this a thing that exists that is actually it's, happening? Yes, you can see the skull. This is a thing that exists that's actually happening. Okay. You're trying to identify what it is. Well, do I recognize it? Because, you know, Leonard, you know? Has, Leonard has seen a lot of shit. I'm sorry. <laughs> Where has Leonard been? So, Leonard, yeah, because he's a warforged, was basically a tool of war in Eberron. And then do, you have like a, do you have like a database of things? like things you thought he has or, seen yeah or like what was there like a database in leonard's mind of like the pre-programmed list of bad things to need to kill right. these, these are things to watch out for these are yeah yeah yeah. okay roll me arcana there's a dc set in the book you passed it uh nice. leonard. it was dc 16 uh leonard uh, you've seen something like this before in your memory banks. You're certain Gasp. this is the skull, and it looks old. It is uh, petrified and fossilized. This is the skull of a mind flayer. That's what I thought. Do you say yeah. anything to that effect? Um. Yeah, I'll let since it's just the the three of us. I'll I'll let everybody know uh, sort of what what it is. So at that at that um, at that mention, um, I uh, I charge into the chamber holding my lance, and um, I basically say, um, uh, "By Sylvanus's power." And as you um, do, as you do that, I channel I channel divinity at the same time for it, which uh, makes it emit a bright, radiant light. Yeah. Ooh, that's interesting. For 20 feet. Uh, yeah. As you do that, Yatara, you have turned it over and you're looking at it in your hands. You've got it out. It's clearly ancient and fossilized. And out of one of the eye sockets falls a crystal. And you can tell uh, this is the thing that you had cast tech magic on. And as you pick up the crystal, you hear the crystal sort of go in your ears go beep 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 and you can tell there's a message there you'd have to sort of attune yourself to it to be able to read it i will do so okay the process of attuning yourself, you're able to attune to uh, three magical items at once. And okay. All right. Yatara, it takes you a while. You have to sit down and sort of do this. And we'll say that you're able to do it in, I'm going to give you that you're able to do it in about 10 minutes or so. Okay. Uh, focusing and attuning your magical energies to this crystal that was sort of speaking to you. And I need you to roll me a D100, please. And then a D10. 
Roll good. Okay. Hold on. This is like market roulette, but you might die. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's D100 market roulette, but only different. A D100 and then a D110. Uh, yes, one D100 and then a D10. You might find a new character. All right. So the D100 was 17. And the D10 is four. 17. Okay. As you tune yourself to it, you start seeing wild things. Ooh. Uh, like you Smelling see. colors. You see, yeah, visions of other worlds that are unimaginable beyond like your comprehension. You see like alternate dimensions and universes and a place that could not possibly exist and your mind is just like expanded opened and destroyed all at once uh there are colors and everything you're just constantly having them um to the point where it's hard to sort of like do basic things it's just constant uh but you do hear a clear something clear coming through it and everybody might think that yatar has kind of gone crazy because he keeps like seeing crazy things you hear something and the message you can tell that it's not in common but you can understand it and it says it goes beep 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 and then it goes not alloyed down emergency protocols enabled crew safe vessel imperiled psi crystal needed come at once beep 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 and then it repeats not alloyed down emergency protocols enabled crew safe vessel imperiled psi crystal needed come at once beep 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 and you in your crazy now mind seeing colored visions and alternate worlds can feel a location like coordinates like beamed into your brain like a compass like you can tell i'm pointed in the right direction where this thing's pointing in. is this what where, lsd where? feels like <laughs> it's what lsd feels like let me read the effect to yatara this is you don't know how long this will last the character experiences vivid hallucinations to the point where they have disability on all ability check disadvantage on all ability checks as this thing has like flooded your mind with visions of what you could only describe as an astral sea and other planets and other wild space systems and there's one filled with flesh-eating clowns that like will eat your face nope so is this an artifact that's, that's uh, projecting this is doing this is it considered an artifact or some sort of it is uh no it's not an artifact well are you asking about an ability related to artifacts well i'm i'm, I'm asking to make sure that um that that uh, it's it's basically because i think my protection from evil and good is being rendered moot what, and and I what, wanted to make sure that that was... Tell me what protection from evil and good does here. Um, um, target uh, cannot be charmed, frightened, or possessed by aberrations, celestials, elementals, fays, fiends, or undead. No, he's definitely not possessed. He has attuned to it. Um, so no. So, yeah. so there's no minimizing that. It doesn't. It doesn't render any sort of mollifying no, effect this is okay. this is a wondrous this is a wondrous magical item that requires attunement by a creature with an intelligence of three or higher let me read you the abilities it grants you telepathy as long as you remain attuned to it hmm. uh you have a permanent madness that is going to last for a period of hours that you're uncertain about <laughs> uh the higher your intelligence the uh it it emanates a purple light while you're holding it. The higher your intelligence, the higher the purple light. And what was your intelligence score, Yatara? Probably greater than 16. Uh, yeah, uh, 18. 
18, you have an intense bright light in a 15 foot radius around you as you've picked this thing up and are attuned to it. Glowing purple light. So he's so, yeah. glowing or the object is glowing? The object is glowing and uh, actually, let me, let me, I'm not sure. Good question. Yeah, so this is not like he's not possessed by a fiend or anything. This is a magic item that he has attuned himself to. It has a negative effect and it has a positive effect. He has telepathy now. And he's picking up messages from something. Uh, it's like that telepathy that you had, Yatara, is stronger. This yeah. one says, uh, the crystal also glows a purplish inner light while you are attuned to it. The higher intelligence, the greater the light's intensity, and the greater the range of the telepathy. 16 or higher, the range of your telepathy is 120 feet, and a bright light in a 15-foot radius and a dim light for an additional 15 feet around, I guess, the crystal and you. And how long do I, do I know how long, or do we know how long it's going to last? Uh, I know how long. Okay. Yeah, that, let, let me put it this way. It had to do with that D10 you rolled. I'll show you a picture. <laughs> uh, you didn't roll that high on the D10. Here's a, here's a picture of the crystal. Got it. Psy crystal. Yeah, so that's what you find. Uh, as you're over there, all of you that are on the opposite side now, Granite Guts, Yatara, and Leonard, uh, roll me a perception check, please. Yatara, you have disadvantage on us. What is the keyboard shortcut for? Is it Alt for rolling disadvantage? Uh, uh, I don't know, to be honest with you. It depends if you're rolling it in Roll20 or if you're rolling it in D&D &D Beyond. Control yeah, like for D&D &D Beyond. Okay. I got a 12. A 12. Okay. Uh, you hear uh, some occasional, like, screech sounds uh, coming from uh, the opposite plank. And I got a 23. Do I make out anything additional? Yeah, you make out the same screechy sounds. Okay. Yutari, with a 12, you make it out too. It doesn't sound like that. That was a bad example. There we go. Ah. <laughs> what? <laughs> you said squeaky sounds. I didn't know what that meant. Ah. Screechy sounds. <laughs> That sounds Coming like from... one of those like rubber chicken things. Like a dying cat. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Coming from around the corner. <laughs> screechy sounds from around screechy sounds from around the bend. So like the squirrel in the Christmas tree in Christmas vacation. Oh god. I was, I was, I was thinking like... more like I was thinking more like Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Like <laughs> So I was thinking there are these wow. Pixar stork things that sort of make that noise. <laughs> Mine, oh, mine, 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 mine. Oh, God. So well, what do you guess, guys do? Well, I guess I um, wheel my gleaming uh, lance in that direction and uh, move closer towards the entrance of our little area here. As you, uh, if you need a light source, I got one. Yeah, yeah, Yutari, you, you're glowing. The entire time, Yutari, <laughs> you're seeing like freaking mad visions of like space monsters and rocket ships and stuff. It's crazy. There are these what look like Spanish galleons that have wings on them. And at one point, you see whales floating through just like open space. You don't even know what space is, but now you like have a concept of that there is a thing that is space. And there are whales in it. You turn around and see Cadillac, and Cadillac is just a giant hamster. 
What? And, and he's talking. <laughs> instead of being Cadillac, no, instead of it being Cadillac with his lance, it's a giant Don't hamster. Don't do drugs. Leonard does not know this, but Kenny J. Murray definitely remembers mentions of laser pistols and is highly motivated to well, meet the flesh-eating I, I clowns guess, in space. I mean, where do you think laser pistols might be? Right. But we don't know. Yatara has not yet revealed to us the vision of the spaceship. He, well, he just heard the message. He's, he's seeing these visions of ships, and he heard the message when he picked up the crystal. But we didn't hear... We, I can yeah, see nope. the crystal, but didn't hear nope. the message. So, nope. so I don't I'll, know about spaceships. I don't, I don't I, know if... I, yeah. I don't get the impression that Yatara is in any shape to convey anything to anybody. Yeah, right, right, right now, no. I'm drooling on myself. <laughs> I don't know if you're, you're not exactly drooling. You're just saying crazy things. Like, you're just like, you're bonkers right now. All you guys know is that Yatara has attuned himself to this crystal, and he is like freaking vision in the Marvel series. He's like on another planet. Can we see or hear anything about this from the other side, or is this still? Uh, you see the bright, glowing purple light. But we don't Yatara's hear any of the crazy with an intent, with an intense glowing purple light. Yatara, are you trying to talk to people? Oh, you're muted. You're muted. Not you yet. I was gonna say, you find it easy that you could talk in other people's heads. You have telepathy, oh, yeah. and you can just like telepathy. start speaking in their minds. You can also like levitate items and like think like you've got like a, you basically have a, a mage hand like active all the time now. You just sort of like. You're talking strange. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Granite Guts is you sort of, are you going around the bend to where you were hearing the screeching sounds from over here? Um, my first thought is mainly defense, so I'm not going to charge. No, okay. I'm just, I'm just defending the entrance for the moment. Nothing, nothing there. You were just hired to clean out the mine, basically. So um, I um, turn to Leonard. I, and... I turn to Leonard and say, uh, "Do we want to? Do we want to try cleaning this up, you and I? Or do we want to? Or do we want to stay here and care uh, to, for Yatara, who's drooling in a corner?" So Le Leonard is going to step out to uh, the the walkway here and flag down everybody else across the way because we heard the sound like the screeching is coming from this way mm -hmm. this other pathway yeah i'm gonna let him know uh that that yatara is having a cosmic experience and yeah yatara it's really weird as you see a giant space hamster having this conversation at this point actually i'm gonna at this point actually speak to everybody um using my new telepathy and yeah. tell them we need to leave and do not kill the whales <laughs> <laughs> have you seen the dragons in the kitchen everybody's ignoring yatara <laughs> we're gonna put them in if, the home if when I can we get see back from where, yeah, yeah you, if, you can if see. i can see him across there yeah, I'm just going to sort of shake my head and start moving back this way and exploring the remainder of the mine. Like this is this is I'm I'm not interested in whatever is going on with him. This what, is whatever freaking me is out. At the, yeah, whatever has caused him to start drooling all over himself and likely requiring a diaper. I'm I'm gone. I'm going to go do something else. Yeah. Uh Back in here, there are small tunnels that appear to have been chipped out by, uh, like, little kobold monsters. Uh, you can see that they seem to be uh, picked out and chipped out like they were trying to carve between one area and another or something like that. Uh, you see a few tamerlanes lodged into the uh, walls, but uh, all of the pathways seem to sort of dead end. Okay. I wasn't really exploring for anything other than just a way to get away from Yatara and whatever has caused him to turn into a, a hopped up baby. I don't know. Yatara, you're on. not like, you're not like completely incapable. You're not like incapacitated. You're able to do things. You just keep having strange visions periodically. They're not so oppressive that you're like unable to walk or get out of here. 
like you can still think clearly you just see cra- you're starting to see crazy things yeah so i know i know that the hamster is one of one of my friends so i'm going to follow the hamster <laughs> yeah <laughs> safe hamster you look over and you say into granite guts head something like thank you giant hamster and i think granite guts hears you say that in his head and it's just like what madness has he gotten into <laughs> you're not wrong <laughs> yeah uh Guitara or uh, Leonard, as you're there, you can see down the other pathway where you heard sort of the screechy noises coming from. And uh, you see sparkling uh, crystals in what looks like maybe geodes lodged into the wall of the uh, cavern down that direction. Uh, and the floor seems to rise uh, to sort of a natural ledge leading there. And that's down this hallway? Yes, sir. Yeah, I, I'm I'm walking to inspect, but I... I, I will accompany if I he's going. I want to offer everyone across the way the opportunity to back us up as we investigate the squeakies. Yeah. And I'm, I'm going as well because I don't know any better at this point. No, you're just following. You're so, not my, like, so my... You're uh, still able to cast magic. You're just having crazy visions. You're just seeing weird stuff. So as we proceed, just FYI, my lance is uh, shining with a uh, radiant bright light for 20 feet and radiant dim light for an additional 10 feet. So a total of 40 feet. Okay. As we proceed. Uh, as you proceed, there are just crystals and gems glinting off the wall everywhere. Multiples of them loose. Several of them look large and beautiful, like they could be quite valuable. You don't see any obvious uh, things unless you're investigating closely. You have to move closer in. Uh, oh, I'm, yeah. I see shinies. I'm going for shinies. Yeah, having been uh, invited across the way, I'm going to reach up, cast light on my hat, and take inspiration from Yatara and make it a purplish light yes. uh, like theirs. Um, and I'm going to cross and join the others. Okay, you're on the other side. What about you, Ordella and Harkest? Are the two orcs uh, hanging out on the opposite side or coming across? Well, I know if one of us goes, the other one has to go. Yeah, I'll go ahead I mean, and go. You can't stay by yourself. I, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, I guess. I don't, I mean. <laughs> I'm, still, is, I'm, still, I'm still upset with the the drooling hopped up baby we found a I'm, mind flayer skull we yeah, found, found a mind flayer skull and then took its brain and then shoved it into our brain that sounds like a I'm great gonna plan go there and see if, i'm gonna go see if, there's if something i went across I you have to uh there are yeah, gonna... beautiful gems that you can see uh lodged into the walls of this cavern to the uh east and uh attached there you think that multiples of them could be sort of picked out and tapped out with minimal effort uh they look like you know from where you're sort of at they look like they could each geode would probably be worth 10 gold each easily I you could probably digging. yeah yeah i'm gonna start whacking at the wall all right well yeah they're same. they're down in here so take your character to wherever you're going Kind of weird. Uh, the geodes are sort of in down here? in this this far cave, Ordella. Oh, other cave over here. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna go right here. Okay. Uh, as you guys do that, uh, you're able to start picking out uh, gems and geodes. Uh, how long are you sort of working at it? Um. I don't know with my orc strength how long do I have to work at it? Uh you could probably get about 50 in an hour. You'd say that each of them are probably worth about 10 gold each. So if you spend an hour here, you could probably get 500 gold worth of gems. Sweet. Um yeah. I, I'll spend that's, it'd be an hour of work. I'll spend at least 
time enough to get a sled's worth of gems because I'm feeling like I just basically sacrificed my sled for our continued warmth. So I need at least a hundred gold worth of gems. Oh yeah. You 50 an hour and they're each worth 10 easily. Yeah. You could pick up 10 in a, a fifth of an hour, a fifth of an hour. I, I'm up for an hour's worth of work if everybody else is. Heck yep. yeah. For that much yep. gold. Yeah. As Dude. as as you're doing all of that, um as you're sort of hacking away, uh Harkus, Leonard, and Ordella. lowering down from the ceiling above you i knew it uh several uh tentacled things strike clowns no no space no face eating clowns uh but these are and i think that uh guitara you just managed to escape you're like watching this madness happen um descending down from the ceiling uh, several tentacled things uh, uh, strike down at uh, at you and as you start chipping out gems and this is against Ordella this is against Harkus and this is against uh, Leonard does a 13 hit you Leonard uh, yep all right Leonard you take six slashing, and Leonard is all of a sudden grappled by this thing, pulled up into the air, and I think lets out probably a uh, just a sudden like, ah! Mm -hmm. And it becomes readily apparent what's here as it bites at you with this horrific beak. Now that you're grappled by it, you're up in the air, and it chomps at you for five more piercing damage, 11 total. And everybody can now see in the ceiling three tentacly looking monstrous things that screech as they bite at you all. And do you guys want to re-roll initiative or keep your initiatives from priors? I can I clear them. I don't care. I, I'm fine with keeping what we got. Since you're already in initiative order here. Mm -hmm. I'm fine then with Then up keeping. first would be uh would be toot. And let me roll the baddies initiatives that are in here. But yeah, Toot, you're going to go probably, you're probably going to beat all of them. Okay. It rolled a 16. This one rolls a 11. And then this one rolls and um, what's it roll? 12. All right. Yeah, Toot, you're up first. You see Leonard get sucked up into the air and uh, grappled by this tentacly monstrous thing and bit. Okay. Um, I think that I will... I mean, given that he's the one that's grappled, I think I'll pull out my uh, bow and shoot at the one that's holding it. Okay. Go ahead and make that shot. That's a hit. Nine piercing. Nice. Okay. And can I see Leonard? Yes. Okay. Uh, bonus action. I will give him uh, uh, Bardic Inspiration. Yep. It holds on to Leonard and its tentacles and beak. Oh, so this Leonard, is, you're this, still... These were the squeakers. These were the things making the noises. Yes. Yeah. It lets out a screech and a similar squeak as it gets popped by Toot's crossbow, but it manages to hold on to Leonard's jangly body. Ordella, you're up next. Okay. Let's see. Do you have a D6 to abilities, checks, saving throws, and attack rolls? Oh, really? Okay. No, not you. Sorry. Oh, I was um, like, wait, Leonard. what? Me. I was yeah. like, something. If you choose to use it. Yeah. All right. I'm going to... How close is the one? It's I mean? right above you. Its tentacles descended down and tried to grab you, but they missed. 
Okay. Uh, the ceiling. Okay. So if you're asking how high are the ceilings, the ceiling is about 10 feet up. This thing is about 10 or 10 or 12 feet above you. It was blended in very well into the rock structures in the ceiling such that it was sort of not noticeable unless you were investigating for it, which you guys heard a squeaky sound and then just ran in and started getting gems. <laughs> true, true, true. Uh, loot we first, then ask questions. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to take my great axe and try to chop at its tentacles. Yeah. Mm. That's a miss. Yeah. Squiggly tentacles. Squiggly tentacles. It's going to try to come back and tentacle at you again. Now this time with a 20. Ew. And it grapples you for 10 slashing and then beaks at you. Beaks. 17. What? Does 17 hit you? Uh, yes. For an additional 8 for 18 piercing. 18 total damage. And now Ordella is grappled up in the air. Ouch. And uh, let me get a... Uh, Something to represent Ordella. Ordella, your uh, uh, your up. Uh, nope. Flip horizontal. We're flip you vertical. Ordella's upside down now. Uh, the next one is up, and it's next to Harkus, and is going to try to tentacle at Harkus. Fifteen hits you, Harkus. It meets. Yep. Meets. Yeah. Six slashing, and Harkus is pulled up into the air, and I guess a six misses. Yeah. So now Harkus yeah. is grappled as well. As you watch uh, three of your party members all of a sudden get pulled up into the air. Uh, Leonard, this one has you grappled now. It's going to uh, beak at you with advantage 17. Yep, that'll do it. For seven piercing damage. Oh, dear. Cadillac Granite Guts, you're up. Okay, so... Um, You've got three of your party members sucked up into the air by these things, by the right. tentacles. So, um, Toot is um, here to cover Ordella. I am going to um, run down Guitar, here. You, you see space tentacles grabbing everybody. Um, okay. So, one minute has probably passed since we were in the cavern where Yatara... Um, Got yes. the skull, correct? Yes. Okay. So, unfortunately, my gleaming lance um, dulls and then winks out of um, of light because uh, that only lasted for a, a, a little over a minute. So, um, I am nonetheless going to keep my lance and um, keep my distance and use its reach to um, stab at this tentacle that is uh, grappling Leonard. Okay. And... Make me an attack roll. That's a miss. Oh, darn it. Damn Marcus, it. you're grappled. Are you going to try to ungrapple yourself? Or are you going to try to uh, just slash at it? Well, what I was thinking I could do is use my other Breath of the Dragon yep. in a 30-foot line and get this one and the one that has Ordella as well. Yes, you could definitely do that. Yay. So um, so it's a it's 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 not, it's just it's a deck save, I think. Okay. Does it when you take the attack action you can replace I'm gonna oh, I guess I do have to here I'm I think gonna give I do the, have to do I'm gonna I, give these these two things are sort of not moving really exactly. So I'm gonna give them disadvantage on the deck save and say twelve and a three. Okay. Well, that was as good as it could be. Uh, each of them take eight fire damage, yes. including the one that you've got that's holding you. And they're going to try to hold on to their grapples. Uh, Harkus, you're dropped. It lets go of you. And you're going to take three bludgeoning damage and you land prone down on the ground okay so you're let go of but you're uh whoa sorry but you're now uh prone down on the ground after some bludgeoning damage guitara 
craziness is happening. Can I talk to these creatures? Say that again. Can I talk to these creatures? Uh, new um, telepathic. You ability? can certainly try. I would like to talk to them. Uh, well, yeah, you can sort of speak in their heads. Uh, they don't seem to be talking back to you or very intelligent uh as you sort of like telepathically try to commune with them the only thing that you get back is mm, eat eat fresh meat eat 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 okay so they're not very intelligent no they seem to be very unintelligent and just like pure like id their desire is to consume the fresh meat that is in front of them all right, I'll attempt to cast magic missile on all three of them. Okay, you're able to do so. You're not that impaired. No disadvantage on attack rolls, just ability checks. So you're sending one dart to each of them? One dart to each, yes. All right. Are you casting at second level? Yes. All right, so you get four darts. That's four darts. So, yeah, and then one extra dart to whichever one is damaged the most. The one that's damaged the most is probably the one that Harkus has. Okay. So you want a uh, two and a three to that one. So like minus five to that one. And then the other ones get a three and a two. Minus three. Minus two. Leonard, you're up. You're grappled by this thing up in the air. Or are you going to try to break yourself loose? Or are you going to just swing at it or something? Can I still, so when I'm grappled, I can use my action to try to escape, and that's a strength check. Yes, or you can try to attack it. Um, I'm going to summon my trusty Dusty. My um, Okay, you summoned him uh, about an hour ago, so how many times can you do that per day? Oh, hang on. <clears throat> hang on. I may not have my drone. Yeah, it just depends on how many times per day you can do this. Uh, once per long rest. Nope. You ain't got Trusty Dusty. He's gone. And he has expired. He's All right, expired. Never mind. Never mind. All right. <sighs> I am going to then... This is how you counter the OP artificer. <laughs> Yeah, Re repeated encounters, 61 <laughs> minutes apart. Just don't let them have long rests. Um, I am going to then... Oh. I'm going to cast... Well, let me see where I am before I volunteer to do this. Okay, yeah, I'm going to cast... Thunder wave. Okay. Con saves they can make. I was giving them disadvantage on decks, but it fails that big time. So he's going to take nine thunder damage, and then he's going to be pushed away 10 feet. Okay. Then I'm going to make him make a con save with disadvantage to try to hold on to you and drag you. Disadvantaged con save. An eleven. I had it. I'd set the DC at a ten. So no, it's fine. <laughs> so you push him ten feet. Which direction? Well, so it says ten feet away from you. So because Thunder Wave centers on you and it pushes, so it's whatever okay. vector he's okay. at. Okay. You know what? You know what? No. Then I think that if you're using this spell slot and it's pushing it away from you, you're ungrappled. It blasts it 10 feet away from you, and I'm going to make it take another D6 uh, bludgeoning damage as it hits the wall. <laughs> uh, five more bludgeoning damage. You, however, are going to fall and take 1D6 bludgeoning damage. <laughs> you take six oh, bludgeoning as you land on oh your dear. head on the bottom of the cave. All right. And you're now ungrappled and prone. The thing lets out a horrific sounding screech as it lands down on the ground. You're uh, you're no longer upside down, but you're um, but you're prone down on the ground now. Toot, you're up. Okay. Watch Ordella's 
being held. Currently down on the ground is Harkus and Leonard, both prone on the ground next to these things. Okay. Uh, Actually, I'm it's gonna... 10 feet away from Leonard. Yeah, I'm going to back up. Ordell is the only one that's held, though. So Ordell is the only one that's being held right now. Um, uh, it looks like it's about to try to grab Harkas, who's down on all fours again. Yeah, but he got away. Um, he did. Yeah, I'm going to look over at Yotara, and I'm going to say, don't kill the whales. And uh, <laughs> then I'm just going to fire at the thing that is holding Ordella. As you see that, Yatari, you see a giant space whale just come out of Toot's mouth. <laughs> Comes right out of his mouth and just flies flies through your head. Uh, that's a hit. And I'll make it make a con save to hold on to her. Four. Uh, Ordella, you drop from the ground and take five bludgeoning damage as you hit the cave surface. I'm in pain. How bad are you? I got five hit points left. Bonus action healing word. Yay. Uh, but you're up, Ordella. This thing above you has tentacles and a horrific looking beak. Okay. Yeah, I'm you get seven my healing. Back. Yeah. There we go. Sweet. Thank you. All right. Now I'm going to try to get with Great X again. Please. Ah! That's a miss. I'm yeah. trying to show you a picture of what this thing looks like. Um, looks like this. Has stone camouflage, blends into the stone, so you can't really see it unless your no. ambushes you. So these are rock cuddly. creatures, not space tentacle creatures. No, these are like okay. from the Underdark. Only right. Guitar is the only one that sees space monsters. Like they this makes no sense. To, the, and he, he, this makes no sense to any of you. Space creature. First of all, none of you even know what space is, and it makes absolutely no sense. Are you guys not hearing the music at all? No. Mm -mm. Nope. Oh, geez. You gave. Uh... Oh. <laughs> That's what happened when I gave uh, mm -hmm. Cantrell. We could have been listening to Metallica. Cantrell, you let me down. I mean, I was just can trying to get us now? not. Just trying to keep us yes, from getting demonetized. Now. Oh, my bad. Yeah, you've had music the entire time, including the creepy music while you were finding the skull. My bad. Hawkins, overlay Man, the creepy missed, music. Yeah, let's start over. <laughs> when last we met. Yeah. All right, Ordella, you missed at that. Thank you. I'm aware as I die again. Yeah, the and the creatures the creature is gonna try to uh, tentacle at you, Ordella. I don't have the runaway option, do I? Uh yeah, you do. You can certainly run away from it. It'll get a uh, it'll get an opportunity attack against you since you swung at it. No. Sorry. But you could no. You wait. You're not a bar. You're not a. Mm -mm. No, that's what I was thinking. Are you gonna move? I mean, if I get far enough away, he, he it's gonna swipe me. at you as you try to get away. Or you, I will give you. It's still your turn. Yeah, you can I'll move. I'll try to get away. All right. As you try to get away, it's going to try to swipe at you with its tentacles. Rolls a nine. Miss. So you managed to get away from it. It's its turn, and it has the ability to climb along the rocks 30 feet in distance. What? Yeah. So it starts climbing along the ceiling until it gets over top of Toot. Uh-oh. And sends tentacles down at old Toot. It rolls a nine. Uh, Harkus, it's going to tentacle down at you again. You're prone. Does an 11 hit you? No. So even though with advantage, it misses. Lastly, this one that got blasted away by Leonard is going to sort of critter over and try to grab Granite Guts. Does a 10 hit you, Granite Guts? It does not. 
the, you're up as this thing tried to tentacle at you. Okay. Um, can I get distance without provoking an opportunity attack? No. Okay. Unless you disengage. Um. Then. Um. Okay. Man, I hate uh, that we I'm didn't going have to, to uh, poke him. Poke, poke, poke. All right. You can attack. Oh, that's not good enough, I don't think. That is not good enough. Harkus, you're prone on the ground. The thing over you just tried to tentacle you again. Um, all right, I'm going to get up and swing at him with the quarterstaff. Okay, no longer prone, standing in front of us. Oh, come on. There it is. Uh, that hits it. Uh, okay, describe to me how you murder this thing. Nice. Um violently and very very angry it just dropped you from the <laughs> ceiling what do you what do you do to it um, with your crit I'm, just describe its its end so basically Explosion. i'm going to smack it so hard with the quarter staff that whatever this sort of obnoxious mouth is just flies off from between whatever these tentacles are it lands on the ground and harkus begins to skin it <laughs> Yatara, you're up. This thing has crawled over towards where Toot is. You have pockets full of gems, and space whales just came out of Toot's mouth. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing. Um, so, actually, do since there's two of them now, magic missile, two pops to each one. Okay. Six to that one, and oh wow! Uh, the one next to Granite Guts. Describe how you explode it with magic missile, and I want you to give me a hallucination that you see as as you kill it. What crazy outer space hallucination does Guitara have as it blows up? Well, I'm able to see the creature in its form, but yeah. when it explodes, it explodes into a million tiny little versions of itself. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Just like fractals of itself. Yeah, that happens over granite guts, and all the little pieces fall and start crawling, I think, around the ground and just shimmy out of sight. Uh, the one over Toot is still alive. Leonard, you're prone down on the ground after you uh, thunder waved this thing and it blasted against the cave wall, and then you watched Yatara just blast it with magic missiles. Yeah. I don't right. think you can see Toot from where you're at, but you can sort of hear the screeching of right. another one. Maybe you can. Yeah, I guess you can, because it's on the ceiling. All right, I'm going to run this way, and then I'm going to cast Firebolt at it. Oh, that'll definitely do it. Oh, that didn't roll damage. Devin, right. describe how Firebolt brings this thing down. So as Leonard runs up after wasting his entire movement because he had to stand, he just stretches out his arm, shoots a Firebolt out Iron Man style. Do you have like little like nozzles that open up? Yeah, like Artificer it's like style? little flamethrowers. Yeah, exactly. So it shoots a Firebolt out and it hits where it's grappled onto the ceiling and causes it to fall down and smash on the floor. Yeah, it falls down right next to Toot and just splats on the ground. Toot, I think you're like covered in, maybe covered in Ook. And as I'm covered in Ook, I just say in Harkus's voice, 50 gold is not enough. Uh, the uh, gems in this room are easily enough as you've spent a half an hour. Each of you have earned about 250 gold worth of gems so far. With another half hour of work, each of you could easily have 500 gold worth of gems. I'm just going to go back to banging on the wall. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> Same. I got them taken care of. Killed them monsters. <laughs> the next ones will see what happens when they try and snatch. <laughs> another half hour. You spend another half hour of banging on gems and 
you think to yourselves, man, we really need a bag of holding as all of your pockets jingle, jangle, jingle, jingle <laughs> uh, with laden down with gems. But each of you have uh, 500 gold worth of gems. Oh, that's awesome. I can afford to feed my dogs. You can. You so can are, we going, are we going to go through the gameplay of actually cashing that in, or should we just go ahead and allocate ourselves 500 gold? What's the best game? Uh, uh, that, is up, that is up to you guys as a party. Uh, right now, you just have gems. If you just intend to cash... You tell me. If you intend to cash it in, I will give you 500 gold for it. If you're going to intend to barter with them or something, then you might be able to get more than 500 gold worth. Or like if you said, I want to take them to like a jeweler and have them polished and set, you, then you might be able to take them to town and barter with them for more than 500 gold worth. I've just been converting them to gold so that I can- If you just want the straight up gold, then you can just take the straight up gold. I vote for straight up gold. That's what I'm doing. Yeah. Easier. <laughs> that depends on if you guys really want, if, like, if you're like, I want to take these into town and then no, have, find a jeweler. And, and... Then I have to create an entry that says, okay, you have X <laughs> gems at X value. I agree. Yep. I agree. Yeah. Uh, you, would, you each have 50 gems, basically. So you each have 500 gold. That's awesome. Except Yatara, which has 500 space snakes. <laughs> so, um... They're beautiful. <laughs> so I am uh, going to uh, wander around to the entrance here as I grumble rather loudly about having um, exploded tentacles on my loins. Yeah. You've got exploded tentacles on your loins. Yeah. That's a Granite Guts family tradition. <laughs> it is. I'm... I'm going to spend about three minutes really just sort of looking at this thing at my feet and wondering what, if, if anything, I it. can do with the, with the hide. <laughs> it looks hideous. The it only way you can describe it is it is a monstrosity. So boots is what you're saying. And belts. Boots and a belt. <laughs> yeah, it's Watch like band. this horrific horrific it was great leather. with a coat <laughs> it's like a horrific leather from the underdark that means it's expensive hat, to make a brooch uh so you guys have explored every <laughs> tunnel down on this level other than the deep pit that continues down into infinite darkness <laughs> the wrong day to stop sniffing glue i missed something I'm gonna have to go back and listen to the recording. Party. I'm gonna have to go back and listen to the recording and find out why <laughs> Melissa's losing it. Oh. It's, a, it's a it's an an airplane reference. <laughs> oh, I just missed the airplane reference. Oh, well, I got the sniffing glue. I just didn't get why that happened. No, it was the oh it was the what can I make out of this? Bro, it's like, I'm like, I'm a bro. I probably haven't seen that movie in 20 years, maybe. Oh, God. I need to watch it. It's good. Apparently. It's still good, from yes. what I hear. Yes. Yeah, yeah so basically everything players. on this level has been explored. Are you guys heading back up? Yeah. Because we took the crank we don't want to elevator go down. down. Uh, well, you actually took a path downwards first. And the crank elevator a while ago. I'm going to, Leonard, you're no longer prone. Hang on, I'll drag you guys up to where the next level is. Okay. Just for sake of ease. Let me just gather everyone together and I'll move you all. I'm not going to encounter you on the way back. And I'm not going to make you fall into infinite darkness unless you guys do something really stupid here. You're just cranking across this bucket. You're just cranking across this bucket, right? Right. 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 <laughs> right. Just so you know, it says if characters fall into the pit, there is no save. Get a new character. Oh. All right, you guys Get are a new character. You guys are here. You walk. You cross over the bucket chain and walk around the bridge. This is the area where you previously murdered that kobold. Uh, as you sort of make your way up. You're able to come back around this way. You find his dead cobalt body. 
this is that one little kobold that like you were chasing them down you killed one and chased the other one down and around and ran to his uh his companions uh in this room there is a table and chairs that are set up to create a space for the miners to take breaks the kobolds were poking a giant rat on top of the table the giant rat is still there it seems to be dead but i don't know what you guys know about giant rats very little I, I can't help myself. I just go and skin it really quickly. <laughs> Roll me nature. It bites you. Uh, the flesh like falls apart as you're trying to skin it. It's disgusting. It falls apart because the kobolds have been poking it for a long time. <laughs> Uh, you're able to sort of all walk backwards uh, along the path that you had previously been down. Uh, you come across the same area where the bucket lift is that took you from the lower level down. We don't need this dead cobalt body to come with us. He can stay back where he was. There is a path to the north that you guys have not been down yet. We're here. Let's check it out. Let's go. Maybe we'll find more gym rolls. Does anybody need like a short rest or anything? Like, how beat up is everybody after that battle? That's up to you guys. If you feel like it. not great. Uh, if you guys are going to stop and take a short rest, you certainly can. The place where they had the folding table is a place to do it, or you could stop here at the bucket lift and sit for an hour and tend your wounds and stuff. That's up to you guys. It's not going to really do me any good, but it might do it. other people. Kind of a long rest character. Yeah. It's up to you guys if you need hit points back to roll hit die. Um, I can lay on hands. You guys are into a TPK. Need... I'm TPKs. I'm totally into it. I can I can lay on hands someone if uh, if they need it. I'm at full. I'm just making sure everybody else is okay. So. How do you roll a hit die in here? Uh, you have to do it during a short rest, and there's a thing for hit die on your character sheet. If you're taking a short rest. You guys tell me, are you resting? Sure. Yeah, I'm looking for it. Okay, yeah, that's you're fine. able to take an hour short rest. Uh, Yatara, I during see. this hour, you keep seeing crazy bananas things periodically they seem to be slowing down a little bit like the speed with which you're seeing visions and you still feel the pinging sensation of like where this crash site is still occasionally hear the beep beep just it's not as frequent you're able to put, Kenny you're muted you're able to put it out of your mind uh, Jonathan but do you still hear the beep 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 not a Lloyd doubt emergency protocols enabled crew safe vessel imperiled psi crystal needed common ones still muted Kenny maybe he's talking to himself or Stephanie probably talking to Stephanie Maybe. So while we're okay. taking the short rest, can I recall a tale from beyond and go ahead and You do sure that? can. Perfect. Tales from Beyond. What does that do? So uh nothing yet. It essentially is something that I remember. And then I can choose to bestow it later on. Oh. So it's kind of just me putting something in my holster for potentially later. Okay. Cool. But it could, it's random. So I have to roll on a table. How long do they last for? You're able to s store them? Uh, it's until I take a rest, essentially. Uh, it's until I take a long rest, I believe. 
Yeah, so you've got it for whenever you need it. It lasts until your next short or long rest. Okay. Yutari, you can tell that the, the like signal is coming somewhere from the south, so you know that much. Way south okay. from where you're at now. In Tamerlane. South from where I, did it get any louder or fainter where we are now from where we are? No, earlier? it's just periodically you sort of get the beep, 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 and you you just have sort of the psychic intuition of which direction this signal, it's like a beacon, almost like an emergency beacon that's pointing you in a direction. And you're still muted, uh, Kenny. He doesn't have his headphones on, so... I don't, <laughs> I don't think he's talking to us. I think okay. he's... Talking to Steph. Okay. Uh, yeah, so you guys are heading around the corner after your short rest. Uh, I'll describe what you see in there. There's a hole in the west side of this chamber that opens onto the central shaft, letting in the sound of the waterfall. The floor in the north end of the cave is five feet higher than in the south end, with a rocky ledge separating them, and a slope on either side leading to the top of the ridge. The walls above the ridge gleam with gem deposits. I investigate the ceiling. Yeah, Jeff, I'm looking at the ceiling. <laughs> Aha, it's the floor. Uh, yeah, I mean, roll me. Uh, what's your passive perceptions? I guess you can roll me perception. My uh, passive's 12. Passive perception. It's on here somewhere. Oh, 13. 13. Okay, so roll me perception. Both of us? Yeah. If you're sort of looking at the, you're looking at the ceilings. <laughs> Bet your biscuits failure. we are. Fool me once, right? I looked and didn't see anything. Uh, Cadillac, you do see something that catches your sort of eyes. By the light of Sylvanus, and I uh, light up my lance again. Because I get that back on a short rest. Okay, you just you just scream that light by the light of Sylvanus. Yes, and my lance flares with the holy light. And as you do that, uh, a thing in the ceiling that looks different than the thing you've seen before screeches <laughs> as it's floating there, and I'll show you what it looks like. By Grafnar's hammer, you shall be avenged. <laughs> uh, it looks like uh, it looks like this. It looks almost like a brain with tentacles and another beak, and it's different looking than the other sort of things. They got a lot of beaks right now. It's different than the other tentacled monsters that you've previously seen. It's, it's more different to your tentacles. Hmm. Interesting. And, uh, yeah, it lets out a giant screech, and you have, uh, basically you're going to get a uh, surprise round on the thing. It's going to roll an, an initiative now. Uh, but you're going to go first. Um, so, uh, I'm going to skip to you. I'm going to give you basically a surprise round here, Granite Guts, as you sort of rolled in here and said, by the light of Sylvanas. Okay. Um, right. then, no then I'm going to, uh, use reach, um, with my lance and, uh, take a stab at it. Okay. 12 hit. Oh, that's a, tw that's a hit. Finally. <laughs> Finally, I hit something with my lance. Oh, you clock it real cool. Nice. Uh, Toot, you're up. Oh, um, actually, um, as an additional, um, I do one more point of damage, um, from the holy power going through the lance. Okay. Cool. Toot, you, you see the whole room is alight with, uh, light and this horrific brain looking thing is floating there okay uh and it's only the one i don't see anything else that's all you see right now okay um i'm going to just shoot a bow at it um i think 
Actually, you know what? No, I haven't done this today. I'm going to viciously mock it. Okay. Um, so, wisdom save. All right. 17. It passes. Uh, Ordella, you're up. Okay. And actually, I'm going to move backwards. I'll duck out of the way. It's floating on the ceiling about 10 feet above you now. I'm going to shoot it with my crossbow and cross my fingers. Okay. That's Sweet. a hit. Sweet. Finally. Yeah. Five. Something. Yeah. Uh, Granite Guts, you're up. Okay. Um, I will take another stab with the lance. I'm um, staying where I'm at. That's a miss. Harkus. Okay. Um, I will shoot at it with my dart. I like how nobody wants to get too close to the thing. No. Ten. That's a hit. Yatara, you're up. <clears throat> this thing looks like one of the brain things from Futurama. I'm going to try to kind of interact with it. Yeah. Uh, it seems to have an intellect uh, that is uh, different than others. Um, and uh, as you're sort of interacting with it, um, you can tell that it is not of this world. It is like otherworldly. Um, it sort of reminds you of these crazy visions that you're having. Um, and you can tell that it is like a, it is not super smart. Like, like its intelligence is like a, like a 12. Like it's got a plus one to intelligence. It's smart, but it's not like a, genius sort of thing uh but it's a it's a like a devourer basically um it's a predator that uh attacks things um it will sometimes use its intellect to allow adventurers to attack other things in a complex that it's calling home to dispose of threats to it um it doesn't have any eyes, and uh, you can tell that it's uh, it's threatened by you guys. That uh, you surprised it, came up on it, surprised it, and it feels threatened right now and is defending itself. But it's definitely dangerous and violent, is what you get from sort of interacting with it. And you can tell telepathically as you're talking, as you're sort of telepathically communing with it. I'm not going to say you're talking to it, because I don't think you can speak its language. But you can tell that it has eaten two of the miners recently. And then, in fact, yes, this is the thing that has eaten the miners prior to the kobolds arrival. Yeah, since I can't talk to it, I'm going to try to blast it. Yeah, you, you're not really... You can you can sort of talk to it, but it's just sort of like it's not really interested in talking to you. Like, you can hear its thoughts in its head, and its thoughts are it's scared, it wants to, like... You guys are hurting it, and it wants to eat people. Can I attempt to talk to it? To yeah, what do you say? To try to, to, try to intimidate it that um, it should let us pass or be killed. Okay. Roll me an intimidation check. I'm going to contest it with its wisdom. Is that with disadvantage? Yes. Because you're seeing madness. Uh, it doesn't believe you. That you'll let it live. Basically. So what are you doing? You're you're trying to blind it. Uh, I, I can tell magic. you this: it doesn't have eyes. Uh, 
I should just hit it with fireballs. Okay. Uh, that's a hit. All right. Leonard, you're up. Okay. You're around the bend from it. That's the wrong tab. Hang on. Hang on. We'll get there. Okay. Um, I am going to firebolt it. Okay. That's a hit as your flamethrower pouches open up. Ten. Holy goodness. Wow. The thing's looking pretty bad. It's up, and uh, Yatara, you hear in your mind, uh, it sort of screech and says, uh, I'll have to tell you what it says later. Um, something in, like, deep speech, you think. Uh, it's a language that's clearly not common, but you understand it. And it sort of says Wait, something about... does it say that out loud? No. It's saying oh. this in Yatara's head. Leonard has deep speech for some reason that I... that is unclear. Do you have psionic abilities? I do not. I'm a robot. Uh, well, you're able to translate deep speech. That might come in handy later. Um... I don't think it makes any sense to Yatara what it says. I'll have to tell you later. Um, it, it's just speaking what sounds like gibberish to you. And it leans forward, moves up to where the three of you are, and it's going to attack uh, at Granite Guts and Carcass nearest to them. Okay. Uh, does a 15 hit you, Granite Guts? It does not. Right. Does a 18 hit you, Harkus? Yep. Harkus, you take 12 piercing damage. Make me a con save. Oh dear. Uh, Harkus, you are poisoned. And you feel the ability to... Somebody has just hit you with uh, Suxinal Coldly. Basically. It's what exists inside of each of its little tentacle spears. And you feel the ability of your muscles to contract stopping as you become paralyzed and it grapples you up. And it, like the other monsters, tries to bite at you with its beaky beak. 23 to hit. Oh, sure. Yeah, for four piercing. Uh, and Toot, you're up. Okay, Toot will duck around the corner um, and bring out his crossbow and shoot. Okay. That's a hit. Six piercing. Ordella. All right. Um, I'm going to try to shoot at it with a crossbow. And okay. Fingers crossed. That's a miss. Ah. Cadillac Granite Guts. Um, I am going to uh, try to give it a poke. Poke at it. Um. That's a hit. And that will be an additional point of damage on top of that, so that'll be 13. Okay, so describe to me how you bring this thing down, Granite Guts. Um, let's see. Um, the lance just goes through the beak and explodes out the backside of the brain. And the brain, like the mass of it, just slides down the lance and then just sort of rests on Granite Guts's palm. 
<laughs> Yum. <laughs> Uh, and then and then I swing around and I uh, let's see oh, where's Harkus? Here's Harkus. Harkus so is lying on the ground, say, paralyzed. Harkus, I got you something. Harkus can't move. He is entirely paralyzed. Uh, this hold paralysis it, please, lasts for another minute, and then Harkus regains the ability to move, wakes up, and picks the, the goop off of himself. walk by and kick the thing while it's down. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, I guess we explore the room properly now? Sure. More Or more exhaustively? As you enter the room, you don't, you are carefully looking at the ceiling for more floating brain things or tentacle monsters and don't uh, see anything there. There are a few Tamerlanes uh, around uh, and other sort of things. If you're uh, going to try to chip away at the uh, wall, you can tell me that. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to chip. chip away. I'm going to try and chip away at the wall. Yeah. Can okay. I carry more gems? Do I have room? Uh... You have a little bit of room uh, in your bag. It's starting to get kind of heavy, and you'll I'll, soon be at disadvantage. Yeah, I'll ensure that I am advantaged, but appropriately burdened. Those of you that are chipping away at the wall, you have to spend a good 20 minutes or longer chipping, but roll me a d100, three of you. I do it too. Yeah, if you're sure. spending the time to chip away. Might as well. 64. Uh, Leonard, you spend an hour punking away at the wall and absolutely nothing of value comes out. All just shards of garbage. Uh, same thing for you, Harkus, and Granite Guts. Pure nothing. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, same thing for you, Melissa. Just well, pure, no pure nothing comes to Ordella. Just what a, what, what a shame. Walk, yeah. Just a bunch of junk. over here to where everybody else is because I'm going to kick this thing one more time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, those were sort of bad rolls. You had to roll better than an 80. Wow. Okay. Fine. That's you fine. Had a 20 you had a 20% chance of finding something, a 10% chance of uh, finding something decent, and, or sorry, a 5% chance of finding something decent, and a 1% chance of finding something awesome. Hmm. Alas. But alas, you don't really find anything all that great there. Just a bunch of like worthless kind of gemeralds things. But that's all you see in this cave. So are there any remains left of the two miners that were uh, partially or fully ingested by this? Are you cutting the body apart to find them? Probably not. I just wasn't sure if there was anything else left in the room. While there. No. Okay. If you're going to hack apart the giant beaked monster, just sort of look in its gullet and see, then maybe. Nah, I'm good. Okay. That is everything that is on this level. Are you guys going to ride the bucket lift back up to the first level? Sure. Yep. I want to ride yep. the bucket. Okay. Press the bucket. I'll take you there. Just easier for me just to drag everybody than. All right. You ride the bucket lift back up to Ah, uh, dang it. Hang on. Let me get you there. Let's cross the way. You ride the bucket lift back up to the first level where you previously rode it, which is all the way over here and one at a time you're able to bucket yourself back up back up to that uh, alcove where the bucket lifted out by the waterfall again where you saw the kobolds that were uh, cutting the bridge 
And again, in this room, as you're sort of there, it's uh, just uh, tremendously loud as the water is sort of like pouring over that underground waterfall. And you've taken care of the kobolds that were sawing away at the walkway. Which way did we come into when we first entered this place? Which way did we come? Which direction do we go? Like there are came, multiple paths. Did we go east? Uh, you went immediately south. Okay. When you first came in. There were pathways to sort of the east and then sort of southeast. Uh, as you sort of cross that bridge, I'll just drag you all across the bridge. You're able to walk across it without any problem because you killed the kobolds. This is the room where you found the like miners and you found the little carving. Somebody found the little carving of a statuette that had tourmalines for its little eyes. I forget who picked that up. I think that was that was Kenny. Yeah, benches and tables are set up as workspaces where miners and we're cleaning gemstones yeah, and you found thing. you found a little statuette uh, of a dog with little tourmalines for its eyes worth about 10 or 15 gold something like that and you guys had come from this uh pathway here and pulled yourself up the ledge there's another pathway heading to the northwestern area which way are you guys going i just did Uh, let's check out the path that we didn't uh, come from. Okay. You can direct your character tokens that way. Granite Guts, as you round the bend, you can see paths that are veering off to the east and to the uh, west. Um, let's go east. Okay. As you again pass to the east, there are again, the path sort of diverges again. There's a path heading more to the north and a path heading more to the south. In sort of this area, you see lots of uh, footprints and things like of that nature. Uh, roll me a perception check, Granite Guts. 16. 16. Uh, you hear some squeaking sounds coming from the south passage. They don't sound like screeches, more like squeak, squeaky sounds. Okay, so I um, I sort of uh, snap my fingers to try to get other people's attention and then I, I point in that direction. Those are horrific sounding squeaks. Oh my goodness. I don't call those squeaks. Squeaks sound huge. Yeah. Squeaks, yeah. Squeak them, squeak them, squeak them, squeak them. <laughs> That's the squeakums. All right. Coming, coming from that direction. So and now that you're out of that shaft, we can get rid of the uh, waterfall. Um, I guess I will begin slowly advancing um into that area. Okay. Because we That's we get, we, we we need to clear this place out, right? Yep, that's what you were hired to do, is to clear out the, uh, clear the area out. As you start passing into there, you hear the sounds of water running. And you can begin to see the sounds of an underground river. Do you still have your light? Uh, it only lasts for a minute, so probably not. Probably not, no light? Yeah, yeah I would not. recast mine, because I can't see. You'd so. just be spamming it and recasting light? Pretty much, yeah. I'm alive. Right. Although, <laughs> yeah. having taken like inspiration from Ichara, like, I think every time I cast it, I make it a different color now. Okay. You're just sort of different coloring yep. it. It's pink right now. And I'm assuming that uh, Ordella and Leonard are following along. Uh, as you're rounding the corner, then, uh, Granite Guts. Yes. You see the eye shine of some animalish critters catches your uh, eyes in the light and they let out uh, some screechy sounds and 
charge at you. And several giant rat-like creatures that uh, are similar to the radish creature that you saw uh, the kobolds poking at charge around the corner and try to uh, bite at you, Granite Guts and Toot. And the rat rolls a 16 to bite you. Which one of us? You. Yep. Granite Guts. Yep. It does five piercing. Okay. And it's going to try to bite Toot. And this time it rolls a nine. No. Nope. And giant rats are going to roll an initiative. As we have giant rats going. Seventeen. Sorry, it's running slow. Ten. Twenty. And thirteen are their initiatives. And up first in initiative order is Toot. Okay. Um... These just look like big rats, right? Yeah, they look like big rats. They're like the size of a small, of like a, think of, think about some of this like the size of like a golden retriever. Okay. The uh, rat, they are rats of unusual size. Okay. Read my mind. From where I'm at, can I see this space right here? Uh, yeah. If you can see it, you can see it. Okay. Um, all right. In that case, I will use that space and I am going to cast a spell. Um, and I will say, entered a winding, a window fitting competition, smashed it, and I'll cast ah. Shatter. Okay. That's going to capture three of them, I think. Yeah. They make uh, a deck save or con save? Uh, Shatter is a con save. One, two, three. We got a nine, a 17, and a 17. So they take half damage on a pass? Uh, correct. All right, so two of them take four. And one of them fails. One of them is killed, just outright. Uh, how does it how does it get killed by shatter uh how tall are the ceilings here uh they are eight feet okay uh this is a 10 foot radius so i think part of the ceiling starts to come down and it crushes it just smash yeah and uh that's the one farthest for me yeah okay cool uh it's giant rat's turn and it is going to weave between you guys as it's sort of able to fit into the space. And it's going to attack you, Toot, with pack tactics of 21. Yep, that hits. The six piercing damage. Okay. Ordella, it's right on top of you now. Okay. Uh, I'm going to hack it with my great axe. Yes! That's a hit. Exploded. Describe how you kill this rat. There is 0% chance you don't just cut this rat in half long ways. I explode the rat guts on the wall. Yeah, the rat just like completely blows up. Splatter. It just completely splatters. Like a hardcore roadkill. Hardcore roadkill, yeah. Uh, the next rat is up and it runs forward and it's going to uh, bite at the granite guts. 20 to hit. Yep. Five piercing to you. Okay. The other giant rat is up. And Ordella moved up. It's going to bite at Ordella. 17 to hit Ordella. That hits. Does four piercing. Uh, okay. Carcass, you're up. All right. I'm going to move up here. Yes, can I just sort of leave by right here and then swing at that one with the quarter staff? 
That'll hit. Uh, one-handed or two-handed yeah, action. Two. All right, describe how you bring this rat down. Just again, I'm gonna sort of flip it up into the ceiling, and then can I do? Can I use the unarmed strike against the other one? Yeah. Does it have to be the same one that I hit? No. You can unarm strike the other one. You can punch the other rat. All right. So then I'm going to go and punch the other rat. You can totally flip one up in the air and then punch the other one straight in the face. Nope. That's a miss. Granite Guts, there's one rat left. It just bit you hard. You're up. Okay. I'm going to try to lance him okay. um, since I still have it in my hand. Uh, that is a miss. Oh. Terrible rolling this go around. Yatara, you see giant space rats. They, they have just, helmets. They have little helmets and they're carrying <laughs> spears and they're saying something about their kingdom. You're not sure. It makes no sense. Just clearly a wild hallucination. But there's rats there. One rat. One rat. Uh, to rule them all. I'm going to hit the one rat with um, a fireball. There can be okay. only one. There can be only one. Do it. I got hit. Uh, 11. 11 is a miss. Sorry. I'm going to growl it. Leonard. We, Le- we don't have a Leonard. He is. And oh, we do. Oh, there's Leonard. Oh, sorry. I'm here. Leonard, I'm you're down. up in initiative. There's one rat left. You hear your fins around the corner fighting this rat. Oh, yeah. I'm going to, well, find me. Uh, here. Yeah. We're going to find this rat. You. There you go. And I am going to firebolt the rat. That'll do it. That's probably going to kill it. Describe what happens as your flamethrowers open up and you uh, roast the rat. It catches on fire and, and just lights up in an awful, greasy mess. Like it just catches fire from the tip of its nose to the end of yeah. its tail in like a... It is like that. It is like uh, the movie, The Road in, of the Unusual Size. It just lights on fire. Yeah. And it is gone. Uh, you don't hear any more screeching as all of the rats in this area seem to be eliminated. In the far part of the room here, you're able to see the underground river that seems to be flowing towards the never endingly deep chasm. An underground river flows through the far side of this cavern, which is supported by a natural stone pillar near the water's edge. Between you and the river are the rodents with long tails and beady eyes. They rush to attack you as soon as you notice them. Well, that's already happened. They rushed to attack you. There was no save. The rodents just rushed to attack. Yep, there is a flowing river in here. Uh, the water feels warm. How does the river that... come in? There appears to be an underground river that's flowing in from somewhere deeper underneath the ground as it sort of like exits from another cavern. Okay. It seems to be, you would assume, uh, roll me nature. So you know about caves, water systems, Maybe hydrology. Go. You know a lot. Oh. Uh, you think that it's kept warm by some sort of volcanic vent. Like underground vents or something. You're also certain, Leonard, that if somebody fell in that water, that they would be way dead. If they fell into that cavern. In fact, let me read to you from the book here. The book of, the book of D&D, as everybody's getting close to the water's edge. Any medium or larger creature that wades into this fissure or starts its turn here must succeed on a dexterity saving throw or be swept away by the current and dropped into the shaft that plunges thousands of feet. 
Next sentence is period. It says, such a fall is fatal, period. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. Do not save. Such a fall is fatal. This room otherwise appears to be empty now. As you were exploring, the only path left is that one to the north that you had not been down. I'm down for some. I'm down for some further exploring on the northern pathway. Yeah. Uh, I'll drag your characters back that way. Granite Guts, you were sort of leading the charge. Are you still leading the charge, Northern? Sure. I'll be happy to. Okay. As you sort of round the corner there, the floor of this dusty cave is five feet higher uh, uh, on the eastern end than on the western end. There is a rocky ridge that seems to be separating the two areas. Uh, there are picks and shovels leaning against the ridge, and small gem deposits in the ridge and the walls of the cave gleam seductively. Uh, the gems in this area are, uh, they come in different colors. Pale green, blue, pink, red, brown, and black. I investigate the ceiling. You don't see any critters or anything. Jeff, I'm going to throw a rock at the lowered portion. Yep. Uh, the rock sort of bounces around in there, and uh, it's quiet. But it lands on it. Yes. It's not an illusory floor. Nope. All right. Lands there. There's miners' picks leaning against it. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna aim for the uh, colorful gemstones and see if we can get something good. All right. Roll me a d100 as you grab one of the picks and try to pull out a colored gemstone. They're not just tourmalines. These could be. Who knows. Yep, could be I, anything. Not me. 39. Probably not. Uh, you not pull out you pull out a small uh, stone. You think it's maybe some sort of like amethyst or something. It's worth about 5 GP. All right. That's what you're able to sort of dig out. I don't know if anybody else is trying to pick I'll out more rocks. I'll take my amethyst and call it a day. Yep. Oh, I'm going to try and get something. Roll D100. All right. I might as well one last try. Yeah, roll D100. Uh, roll another amethyst for too. you, Harkus, worth about 5 GP. Ah. Same thing for uh, for Ordella and Cadillac. Just like some amethyst touchdowns. Okay. And how Same much was thing. that again? Toot! Oh, ho, ho. Ooh. Toot! You pull out a tourmaline that is beautiful in shape and color, pink and almost flawless. Uh, this sucker is worth easily 50 GP. Nice. I'll pocket it, but I'm not gonna convert it immediately to GP. I'm just gonna leave it in that yeah. state. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful tourmaline. And as you proceed through this room, the path wraps back around to the west, and you recognize this room to the western end as you wrap back around, as this is the area where you first entered the cave, where there are racks holding picks and hammers which are nailed to the walls, and the floor covered with dust, cobalt tracks, and rat tracks, and the path leading upwards and out of the mine as the lot of you are confident that you have explored every cranny of the mine and have cleared it as well as is possible. Um, Jeff, I, I uh, missed the um, value of the cheaper gym. 5 GP. 5 GP? Okay. 5 GP. Thanks. You guys exit the mine, I assume. And several hours have passed. It's starting to get late as you make your way back to uh, the city of Tamerlane. On your way back into Tamerlane from the mine, the gem mine was uh, up here. You're going to probably head over to the Blue Clam, which is where you the, uh, is where the speaker of town 
was previously hanging out that uh, offered to pay you fifty gold each to 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 do this to clear out the uh, clear out the things. Although you are now laden down with uh, gold, Oris Matthew was hanging out at the Blue Clan. You all walk through the center of town. It's starting to get towards evening time, not entirely dark. But the thing that strikes you the most as you're walking through the city is that at the edge of town, near the docks, on your way there, there is a merchant band that you recognize that is breaking down the, uh, the stow for the evening, clearly not traveling out of town for the night. And you see the wicked-looking face of Torga Icefang. And the distance packing everything up, again, is Suffolk Keltro. And that is where we will leave it for the evening. So where is he on this map? Because it, it, in my mind, and I know I've seen him before, but in my mind, he looks like uh, Jack Frost from the Rankin Bass cartoons. That's Suffolk. Zoom in on him. You can zoom way in on him. Let's see if I have a let's see if I have a handout for you. Let me see if there's a handout for for him. Oh, so he's just like he's like a dark, mysterious figure with like ice blue eyes. Yes. He's not like so. I, I imagine him like super pale white. With, I imagine no. him like a white walker. He's kind of a creepy looking man that had sort of. He's got ice blue eyes, and he's sort of is an odd mannered man, but he's definitely a man. You met him in the bar. Right. And he, and he is there, and Torga's merchant band is there. And they seem to have gotten there during the day while you were in the mine, have arrived behind you, and are packing up the stuff for the day to stay for the night somewhere. And Sefik is here. Awesome. You see them across the way as you're making your way in, and they're packing their things up. And the decision for what you will do, if you will confront them, or if you will wait, or wait for a more opportune time, or what you're going to do is up to you guys. As Torga has arrived in Tamerlane behind you. And the helpful guard a few cities ago said that perhaps uh, when they broke for the night and went their separate ways would be a good time to yeah that was the happenable happen that was the information you got if you were trying to trying to do something that was the advice that you were taking maybe maybe try to if you were going to try to take somebody on don't take them on all at once i will i will throw out that i am in no shape to go and try and take out anybody right now. Pick a fight. Pick a yeah. boss fight with a bunch of. Pick a boss fight with a bunch of bandits at this moment. Pass a couple not band aids at you and say, "Let's yeah. go." <laughs> not, a couple, not, not a good decision. Yeah. I need. Well, you're. I need what is colloquially referred to as a long rest. <laughs> Those are hard to come by, aren't they? In this I icy know, world, especially now that you know my weakness. Mm. I still think space whales. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, you're seeing crazy. You're seeing cra- you. There are two. There are planets in the sky. Uh, the what? Like giant planets that are just taking up the sky. Other mm. worlds. You're seeing visions of. And let me let me give you this as another teaser on the way out the door. Yatara, you feel the pinging in your mind and you have gps like coordinates like pinging into your brain and they are telling you not a lloyd crashed and i'll show you where it's pinging to here i put a little token marker there i wish i could make it another color on the map. Just constant ping in the mountains of the spine of the world, at the edge of the mountains, off of the tin trail. 
south of uh, south of the Ten Towns. This is where like the the like beacon that's saying like not alloyed down, ship damaged, crew safe, need psi crystal, come at once. Is like directing you. Going good towards the light. Obviously, it was going to be below Dugan's hole. <laughs> well, we know he, we need to pick up on the way, Rambo. Man, for down real. Dug- hey, I'm happy down in Dugan's hole now. Don't you go messing with me. We're just going to kidnap him. Next quest. We need you and your crossbow, you crazy n- nutter. <laughs> yeah, maybe we'll be, we'll be. Pick throw a burlap sack successful. over his head. Yeah, we'll be more <laughs> successful at getting him than the dog. Yo, <laughs> oh, you went there. Too Rolls. soon. <laughs> Roll, rolls matter. <laughs> Other things that you guys know about. Torga is here. You know about a party of adventurers that were traveling to the top of Kelvin's Cairn. You don't know what they were after, but they were being taken there by Garrett, the missing guide. Uh, whose dog was found. You also know about missing fishermen on the Lactin Schmear out of East Haven that you were uh, hired to come across. And you also know about a person named Macradius who was building a device, a gnome that was trying to build some magical device to end the never-ending winter in a cabin that isolated himself in the clerics that that, uh, Granite Guts met with. He felt compelled to speak with the clerics when he was in the city of Bryn Shander. They told one of them told him about uh, about their buddy that had gone up to that cabin, hadn't heard from him in a while, and hoped that if you were ever around that area, you'd check in. Uh, those are some of the active things. And then there's the um, the oh the moose, the moose, the white the moose, moose of Lonelywood. Lonelywood. Yeah, the naturalist, when, the naturalist. When you told them about the monster of. Uh, the monster of Mare Dweldwin told you just like the moose that's been terrorizing the people in Lonelywood. Another, like, beast that's been awoken and somehow, like, turned against the locals. So you know about that as well. And, uh, now you know about something else. Yatara has, uh, Yatara has a crazy head. So, Jeff, as we're just, as an aside, as yep. we're sort of making our way through these places, um, I'm going to be keeping my eye out for a shop that might be able to sell me a bag of holding. Yeah, they're hard to come by in this part of the world. So that, that's, I figured it would take sort of me constantly looking for one. So. Yeah, so to if there are ways to find those specific things, it would be in Bryn Shander where there's like markets and market roulette existed. Uh, but the problem is is that everything's been so cut off that it would be very expensive if there's one that has it. You probably have enough gold to buy one now, but very, very expensive and um, rare. The like roulette markets are basically all shut down right now because there's just there's no supplies anywhere. And that's where we'll leave it for the evening. Hope that you guys awesome. had a good. Hope you guys had a good time. You found Torga. She's made it up to. Just to give you guys a little inside baseball, uh, Torga was meeting with somebody in the city of uh, Targos when they went to Targos, <laughs> and you guys sort of went on by. Good night, everybody. All right. See y'all next week. See you guys All next right. week. Good night, everyone. Bye. Bye.